Hey friends, today I want to tell you about cheat codes and After Effects, specifically expressions. So today I'm going to show you the expressions that I use most often in my projects. So let's get started and we'll start with Wiggle. I have some pre-made compositions with specific designs and animations. I've prepared something like this for Wiggle. This is an eye and for example, I want to animate so that it moves inside but I want it to happen randomly. For this, we have the wiggle expression. To do this, we select our shape, press P, hold down Alt, click on our bell, and type. The first value will be our frequency, meaning how often our movements will occur in position. Let's make this one, and after the comma, the second value is the maximum distance that this movement will occur. Let's make it 20. And if we play our animation, you can see that our circle has started to move. You can also just copy this expression, open the position on uh, the other two shapes, and paste it. And you can also slightly change the values. And here's what we ended up with. The second expression is value at time. So, for example, if we have an animation on the path of our shape, and we want to loop our mm, shape, or rather our animation, a regular loop out won't work for us. We specifically need the value at time expression. Of course, I've left all the expressions in the video description. And to apply our expression, we also click with Alt on our bell and paste our script or expression, value, time, time. And this is what it looks like. Our animation will now happen continuously, like this. Just here, position, you need to add loop out. The next expression is two comp. It's very convenient to use it if you have a shape with a gradient. And for example, you need to animate that shape. For example, if I move it to a different location right now, the colors of my gradient stay in the same position and aren't attached to the shape at all. To prevent this from happening, and to keep the colors exactly in that place, even if I animate our shape, we can use the two comp expression. To do this, we open the position of our gradient, and we write to comp in point. Our position might change right now, but we'll fix everything. And we paste all four of them here. You can see that our um, gradient positions have shifted. Let's say something like this. And that's it. If we move the shape now, we can even animate it. So we see that the colors stay in the same place. So they move along with the shape. The next expression is loop out. In this composition, I've prepared a small voice cycle, just like one cycle. So to keep our animation going, we can nicely apply the loop out expression. Here you can see my animation keys. And you can write loop out. We have different options to choose from, but you can just write loop out with parentheses. And here's what we end up with. We don't need a million keys. We just animated it once. And we get a fully fledged character that walks. The next expression is time. For example, we have some shape. And we want to animate the rotation. We just write time. It's applied by. The third one is a mess. And our triangle will rotate at 20. And our triangle will rotate at 20 like degrees per second. We can add a little more if, for example, we want to have some keyframes to create a slightly more interesting dynamic animation. We can set two keyframes like this. Here we have this animation. We can write a customized expression a bit.
And here's what we will get then. So our triangle is constantly moving at the rate of 15 degrees per second, but also at the moment when we have keyframes, meaning we add our value, which will be our keyframes. Nothing really changes. And then the movement continues, as we've written in the expression, which is time multiplied by 15. The next expression is random. You can apply it really cool, I don't know, I drew a little simple lamp with a light here. And for example, I want this light to kind of blink. So you can simply write a random expression, such as anywhere between the numbers 0 and 50, for example. It will be something like that. But it looks a bit sharp to me. So we can add a bit more to our current plan, perhaps a few more details, and try time to see how it works out in the end. 12 frames per second. And here's what we will get. And we will also copy this expression and we'll add it to our first light. This one on top. Actually, let's do it differently. We'll use this with the opacity so that it stays the same and blinks at the same time. Because if we write the same expression, the light will blink differently. And we'll just link it to this opacity and... Uh, so it turns out to be a bit of a creepy animation. The next situation is an expression for a string. So the situation is we have some circle with a stroke and when we want to scale it to create some animation our stroke increases but this can be easily solved we copy our expression find our stroke and paste it here and after this when we increase it the stroke will remain the same as it was so we see it changes here accordingly by 7 pixels. But if we revert to the previous value, it will be 30, so it changes according to the size of our shape. If we reduce it, it will also be... It will actually be 125, but in fact, it seems like 30. And the last expression for today is clamp. Here's, for example, another case. There is text. Here we have some slider. And, for example, you want to lock this text so that it doesn't rotate, let's say only 90 degrees to the right and 90 degrees to the left. To do this, we link the rotation of this text to the slider. And we paste this kind of expression into the slider with alti. Clamp value and the minimum, for example, we want it to be minus 90 and the maximum value will be 90. And in the case that we rotate to the right, no matter how much, like 1000 or 2, it wouldn't go beyond the maximum of 90. And the same goes for the other direction. No matter how much we want to rotate, it will only be minus 90. It's also very convenient. I often use the clamp effect in my projects. If I'm passing a project to someone or selling it on stock sites, I do it so that the client can't just change the values to something higher. Because after that, the animation might not look the way it should, and it will only get worse. So you can nicely lock it within a certain range of values. That's all for today. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Thank you.